Madam, what is the case? Uh, sir, it's about my termination. You are working in which department? Judiciary. Okay. As a judge. Achha. Lord Shiva will come to the last order which was passed. Lord Shiva's query was very specific. What is the difference between? Ah. Ji. This matter we have heard sometime. Ji. Oh yes. Ah, madam, is there? Yeah. Uh, sir, regarding your query, uh, which you uh, said last time is the to clarify the difference between dismissal and termination. Huh. And uh, by this honorable court, uh, recently a judgment is passed on uh, 12th uh, June 2023 in uh, matter of Krishna Kumar Kosariya versus state of uh, Chhattisgarh huh. in uh, para number 20, 21 and 22. Uh, in 22, uh, the court relied on the uh, learned uh, Supreme Court's judgment on Motiram Dheka versus General Manager North Eastern Frontier Railway, in which uh, the court found that has expressed that the said words mean nothing more or less than the termination of the service of a person's office, the effect of dismissal or removal of one from his office to discharge him from that office, that is to bring about cessation of, cessation of service. Thus, the said words comprehend every termination of service of a government servant Article 311, sub clause 2, in an effect, therefore, lays down that before the service of uh, government servant are terminated, he must be given a reasonable opportunity of serving cause uh, against such a termination. And uh, in uh, para 21, the inquiry, uh, uh, 22, the scope of the word dismissal, dismissed and removed employed under Article 311 of the Constitution, India. Madam, a copy, I'm copy to this. Yes. Uh, yes. Para 23, my lord. Uh -huh. The Supreme Court in the matter of Parsattam Lal Dhingra versus Union of India has held that mere termination of service without more of such an employee would constitute his removal or dismissal from service attracting Article 311.2 of the Constitution of India. Madam, you were on probation, no? Yes, sir. So, please tell us, see, when you are on a probation, all right? Yes, then, sir. And this is, this, he is a confirmed employee. So, what is the, what are the protection granted, can be granted to a probationer employee? You are a probationer? Yes, sir. So what is the protection can be granted to you by the constitution? Uh, please tell us the... Uh, sir, it is, uh, uh, the safeguard is granted under article 311 sub clause 2. In, How? Uh, it says that if any... Um, you are not, see, please, please try to understand these things. When you are on a probation, yes, sir. What is your status? Please explain on this issue first. Yes. Sir. And what is the law which which provides that the probationer has to be protected in what manner? Yes. Sir. You you are you are taking the judgment that will not help you. Prima facie, I tell you. Yes. Sir. You are please go and search some judgment on probationer. Yes, sir. I have searched. Yes, please tell us now. Come to that judgment. Yes, directly to this judgment. Uh, yes. What is this? This is judgment passed by the Honorable Supreme Court in the matter of Registrar General High Court of Gujarat versus Jaisi uh, Chamalal Buddha Bhatti. Uh. In this case, uh, which paragraph you want me to read in out? Paragraph 28. Uh. 
says that huh? having gone through the silent uh, judgments on the issue in hand, one thing which emerged, uh, emerges very clearly is that if it is a case of deciding the suitability of a probationer and for that limited purpose any inquiry is conducted, the same cannot be faulted as such. However, if during the course of such an inquiry any allegations are made against the person concerned which result into a stigma, he ought to be afforded the minimum protection which is contemplated under Article 311 sub clause 2 of the Constitution of India even though he may be a probationer. The protection is very limited which is to inform the person concerned about the charges against him and to give him a reasonable opportunity of being heard. Having noted the fact, as they have emerged on the report, can be preliminary inquiry conducted against the respondent in the present case be said to be an innocent one only to assess her suitability. It is not, is it not apparent that certain aspirations were cast on the character of the respondent during the course of the conduct of this inquiry on her suitability? If that was so, was it not expected from a high judicial institution like the High Court to afford her the minimum opportunity to defend herself? In some sense, this court has observed that subordinate judges are under the care and custody of the High Court. This custody and care certainly requires the High Court to afford the subordinate judges the minimum opportunity which is otherwise available to every other civil servant under Article 311 sub clause 2. Hmm. Uh, my lord, this case is similar as my case because uh, while deciding my confirmation, the uh, standing committee, while the standing committee uh, dealing with the confirm uh, confirmation of my service, mm. it took uh, 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 in annexure R21, page number 408 of this paper book, mm -hmm. certain matters were taken uh, by the standing committee on its uh, meeting held on 31st January 2017. In that, first thing was that I, I filed a complaint against then district judge on uh, 25th April, uh, 25th April 2016, that was dropped in that meeting. Mm. This meeting was uh, held for the, uh, uh, regarding the confirmation, uh, to decide the confirmation about my job. And the second thing was, uh, there were three complaints that was taken by the standing committee. Uh, that is in annexure uh, R24, page number 4. 14, in which first complaint is comments stated 30, uh, 30th January 2016, submitted by then district judge Ambikapur regarding complaint dated 30th uh, December 2015 by Anju Gupta ADPO against the petitioner. There was one complaint uh, she filed against me. In that, uh, it is humbly submitted by the petitioner before this honorable court that above complaint was filed by the Anju Gupta ADPO on 38 December 2015 and the comment on the same was sent by the respected district judge Ambika Poor on 38 uh, January 2016 as mentioned in uh, annexure P21 page number 366 to 369. But no action was taken against the petitioner till 31st January 2017. That Till one year, there was no action taken by uh, taken against me, but it was uh, taken at the time when my confirmation was about to decide. That time, the uh, standing committee took uh, this complaint before it, and uh, this complaint was filed before uh, the extension of my probation. But when we see the specific uh, uh, order, the uh, standing committee uh, in its uh, uh, meeting on 24th uh, January 2017, it's uh, mentioned in the uh, next year R21, page number 408, that time standing committee uh, directed the Registrar General to keep ready the entire service record of the petitioner with nine other judges of her bench in my bench, especially after the extension was granted. This uh, complaint was before the extension was granted to me. This complaint was in uh, December 2015 and my extension was on 18th March 2016. 
and then second complaint was also taken that complaint was made by the then district judge ambikapur against me on 30th april 2016 it is uh, pertinent to mention that before this uh, 30th april 2016 i myself filed an uh, uh, complaint against then cj mr varyal uh, against uh, about his conduct but he uh, has uh, but uh, no action was taken by district judge and then he uh, uh, complained uh, he filed a complaint against me before the registrar general and this was taken uh, at the time of deciding my confirmation before the standing committee and and the third complaint uh, was taken by this uh, standing committee is uh, uh, complaint uh, 10th may 2016 by one rs sukla ai asi he complained against me and that complaint was taken at the time of deciding my probation and this complaint was made also made after i complained against uh, mr varyal and also against when i complained against uh, mr varyal and the district judge ambikapur at that time i also complained about uh, because he has not taken any action against uh, that cgm uh, cgm i uh, complained about uh, a uh, district judge and cgm before the portfolio judge because no opportunity was given to me so all this complaint were taken at the time of uh, consideration of my probation that's why i have to get this uh, protection under article 311 mm. clause 2 yes. because the complaint were taken uh, was uh, taken so this therefore this uh, this case of uh, uh, Registrar General High Court of Gujarat and Justice Chaman Lal Buddha Bhatti is applicable. Now, subsequently, uh, the Honorable Supreme Court has also taken some other view. In 2019 or 18, you have you have gone through with the judgment of it is arising out of I think Rajasthan se hai shayad. You just check up it up. 22. Uh, yes, I think. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Abhay Jain versus. Uh, yes, what is what is this? What is this? In this case, uh, the matter was also about this additional. Uh, he was uh, uh, an on a probation. Sorry. On a he was on probation. Yeah, he was also in probation. Where you copy here, please. Yeah, yeah. Madam, don't tell. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. Sorry, sorry, sir. We are in living in Hindustan. Yes, sir. So, sorry. Doesn't look nice. Sorry, sir. What are you saying? Sir, in this case. Uh, The Abhay Jain was uh, appointed as an additional district judge in mm. year of 2013, mm. and he was uh, while dealing with uh, some uh, bail matter. Mm. He has uh, given bail, mm. and they, uh, that was the uh, uh, complaint against him. Mm. He was in probation for two years, in mm. two, uh, and but uh, before. Uh, Uh, and one anonymous complaint was filed against him stating that uh, after rejection of the high court on that uh, particular bail he granted the bail hmm. and uh, kindly uh, my lord kindly see the page number the la last page Hmm. Para seventy one. Hmm. The Honorable Supreme Court held that to conclude, we are of firm view that in the present case there was no material to show cause unsatisfact unsatisfactory performance of the appellant in terms of requirement under Rule forty five of and forty six of the RJS Rules two thousand ten. Moreover, the Mr. Appellate... Uh, High Court, you tell us yes, what are the rules to record a finding whether the performance of the petitioner is satisfactory or not. Not sure. Whether any statutory rules have been framed. Not sure. Well, which says how the uh, performance, performance appraisal be... has to be made. Not what sure. is the pendency of the? Uh, what are the parameters laid down by the rules not made sure. in this? We have to tell us on the directive of him. Yes, sir. Yes. My Lord. the uh, in this case uh, moreover the appellant's discharge was not simply seated as claimed by the respondent the non communication of the acs to the appellant has been proved to be arbitrary and since the respondent choose to hold an inquiry into appellant's 
uh, alleged misconduct, the termination of his service is by way of punishment because it puts a stigma on his com uh, competence and thus affects his future career. In such a case, the appellant would be entitled to the protection of Article 3 311 subclause 2 of the Constitution. Moreover, the adverse comments on the ACR for the year 2015 would not have been the basis on which the appellant was, appellant was discharged from service. The appellant was never granted an opportunity to improve and there was no intimation to him about his performance being unsatisfactory. This case is also uh, relevant to my case because my ACR of 2015 to 16, in which adverse remarks are uh, uh, wrote in uh, about me, that was communicated to me after my uh, termination, uh, 10th April 2017, that was communicated to me. When communicated to you? 10th April 2017. And that is the ACR of 2015-16. And um, you are uh, my lord, uh, regarding rule, there is a rule also, rule of the High Court. The Chhattisgarh Judicial Officer Confidential Rule Regulation 2015. When this rule has been made effective? 2015. No, the rules are 2015, but when it has been made effective? The date must be given. Yes. In in that rule, uh, your uh, your lordship, rule, regulation number seven. Hmm. Yes. Regulation number seven speaks about communication. Yes, my lord. Mm. Preparation of ACR and its time limit. Yes. And it's uh, for, uh, it's subclause for the ACR submitted by the reporting authority shall be made available to the concerned review authority by 15th May. My review authority is uh, the portfolio judge. Portfolio judge, yes. Sir. Note, uh, its note says every endeavor shall be made by the authorities in early finalization of confidential report so as to enable the authority to communicate the final, con final concluded confidential who are, your, who are your uh, reporting authority? My reporting authority was the district judge. District judge. And uh, uh, Reviewing district. authority is portfolio judge. And uh, portfolio. what is the role of the Honorable the Chief Justice? Uh, sorry, my lord. For whether the Honorable Chief Justice is accepting authority? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yes, sir. How? Where the, whether it has been defined in the rules? I think schedule one is not uh, attached with this rule. Yes. Yeah. Schedule one is there, sir. Yes. Schedule one. Yes. Schedule one. Seventh serial number seven. Yes. Judicial officer subordinate to ju district judges of concerned district. District judge is reporting authority. Portfolio judge of the concerned district is reviewing authority. And accepting authority is chief justice. Yes. Chief justice is accepting. Chief justice. What was the uh, whether the what was the comment of the uh, this review authority, whether he has agreed with the uh, uh, opinion given by the uh, reporting authority? Yes, sir. But the uh, ACRs is not a ground for you to not to continue in the service. They have not taken care. Uh, they have not taken into consideration the ACRs. Well. While, uh, while not continuing uh, or while discontinuing your professional period. But my lord... Uh, so, see, this point will help you out. Please tell us. See, your services were term discontinued, terminated, non-professional period is not extended. When, what was, when the date of order was passed? When the order was, uh, termination was passed? 9th uh, uh, February 2017. 2017. 
ACR was communicated to you on 1 4 2017. 10th April 2017. 10th. Whether a well not continue with you in service, they have taken into consideration the ACRs of you or not. Tell us. Yes, sir. Because it's. Where is your. Please read out the order of uh, termination. Please read out the order. Order of termination. Yes, please. Yes. Read out. Kindly see page number 49 of paper book. Yes, please. The government of Chhattisgarh, accepting the recommendation of the Honorable Court, uh, Honorable High Court of Chhattisgarh, made in accordance with the sub rule 4 of rule 11 of the Chhattisgarh Lower Judicial Services Recruitment and Condition of Service Rules 2006 for termination of services of Kumari Akanksha Bhardwaj, member of Lower Judicial Service, presently posted as Civil Judge Class 2 Kankher. Hereby terminates the service of Abo Manson Kumari Akanksha Bad with immediate effect. And what was the recommendation of the full court? There is no recommendation by the full court, my lord. No, no, it will be. There is only a standing committee who recommended my termination. What was the recommendation? Kindly see page number 409. Yes. Uh, para, uh, resolution second says the standing committee considered the overall performance and entire service record of Kumari Akanksha Bhardwaj on parousal of, uh, uh, parousal of the record. It is found that C is not fit for confirmation in service. Therefore, it is resolved to recommend termination of her service under sub rule 4 of rule 11 of the Chhattisgarh Lower Judicial Service Recruitment and Condition of Service Rule 2006. This recommendation was made by Standing Committee, my mom. Hmm. And it also says entire service record of Kumari Akansha Vardar. So, whether entire service record means your ACR has to be taken? See, ACR. And uh, this entire service record are uh, altogether different things. Means whether the this order doesn't speak about that uh, your ACRs have been taken into consideration. So I don't think that will help you out at the in, uh, at, uh, at this at the moment. Once uh, whether the performance assessed by the department by the standing committee is justified for termination or not, that has to be submit by the state, by the High Court. You are saying that you have taken two stand. One is that as per the judgment passed by the division bench of this court, the standing committee is not empowered to terminate. This is yes. your one, one yes. of argument on the last date of hearing? Yes, my lord. The second is that standing committee has, has considered the record and no opportunity of hearing has been given to you. This two limb of argument is there. Yes, my lord. This is only two points you want to emphasize? But uh, kindly see the ACR uh, communicated to me. In the year 2017 after termination, yes, after sir. discontinuation of your probation period or yes, non-extension non of your probation period. The appropriate word be non-extension of probation period or dismissal, termination, whatever the name is. But, but these two points mainly you are emphasizing that the standing committee has no power in view of the rule 4 of the rules of High Court rules, yes, the sir. standing committee cannot issue uh, cannot issue the, uh, the order for termination. Yes, sir. One is, and the entire service record has been considered, has been considered, but no opportunity of hearing has been given to you. Uh, my lord, one more thing is that yes. not entire service record was taken. You are this is, you want to say, sir? Likna, the petitioner in uh, 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 in person would submit point number one that the. Uh, the standing committee uh, is not empowered to uh, to recommend it for termination uh, in view of the rule 4c of the high court uh, of the of the rules high court rules 2007 as uh, such termination uh, is bad in law number 2 she would further submit that the uh, entire service record has not been taken into consideration yes my lord and therefore the therefore recording of finding 
that performance is unsatisfactory is contrary to the record. Yes, uh, as such, the, the recommendation is bad in law. Yes, ma'am. Third point is the uh, since the uh, they have taken into the consideration certain allegations levied against uh, the petitioner. Therefore, at least she must be given an opportunity of hearing. Yes, ma'am. To defend herself. Yes, ma'am. This is your three point, na? Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, sir. No, sir. At the outset, I have submitted that it is to be argued by senior advocate Mr. Bharat. Where is he? Your Lordship, today he is unavailable, and a fixed date was granted earlier by your Lordship of. Yes, we will give a fixed date. Any any part date? Part yeah. argument, Madam. This is your argument. Yes, Your Lordship. And uh, Madam, why, why don't you prepare synopsis of your case? Yes, Lord, I have already prepared. Give it to us. The petitioner has already uh, submitted his written synopsis sure. uh, also. A copy, you can give them Mr. Vankhade uh, would submit that uh, his senior, Mr. Prafool Balat, is not Mr. available Harshwardhan. to... Huh? Harshwardhan. Mr. Harshwardhan would submit that his senior is uh, not available today. Therefore, he prefers short adjournment. Uh, argument heard in part. Uh, Madam Bharadwaj has already argued the matter. This is this case on, for further reading on... Sataiz January. Sataiz January will hear finally. Yes.